Hello everyone, my name is Paul Third, and today on Mixing Wednesday, I think, I think, I may be doing something that no other audio YouTuber has ever done. You don't get many audio YouTubers who decide to put their own mixes and their own mixing decisions to the test versus audio artificial <laughs> intelligence. So today I am going to be comparing my mixing decisions on compression and EQ versus Sonable's Smart Engine and the Smart Comp and also the Smart EQ3. Human versus artificial intelligence. Who's going to win? Which is going to sound better? Am I going to end up with egg on my face? Let's find out. Before we start, I will give you a quick run through of what the Sonable Smart Comp and the Smart EQ3 actually are. So Sonable is using spectral balancing. It's hard for me to say balance. I, I say balancing. Balancing. <laughs> spectral balancing. And that's the only time I'm going to say that again. So what is that? So long story short, if you think of spectral as the frequency spectrum split into tons of tiny little segments. So the Smart Comp. Think of the Smart Comp as a multi-band compressor with over 2,000 bands, right? All those little, little segments being compressed differently. So what is the purpose of the Smart Comp algorithm? The Smart Comp algorithm is to give you a smooth, transparent, and balanced compressed signal. So let's use a kick as an example, okay? The compressor doesn't know that it's dealing with a kick. If you tell it that it's dealing with a kick, then in terms of all those tiny little bands, it will compress differently. It may decide not to compress the lows. It might decide to compress certain parts of the frequency spectrum. And again, if you tell it a snare, it might choose to compress the lows. It maybe might not compress certain parts of the mid-range. So in a nutshell, the smart compressor stops overhyping, okay? Think of overhyping like an LA3, for example. Right? If you use an LA3A, a lot of people use LA3As because it has this kind of low mid kind of push. And I think of a lot of compressors that you'll use and it'll give you like a high end roll off and it might give you some lows, say like um, El Ray, for example, from Acoustic, like the RA6 compressor. That's like the tonal characteristics of the compressor. In Sonable Smart Comp, you're not going to get those tonal variances because it's trying to give you a spectral balance. So you tell the algorithm what the source is, it'll compress it a certain way and then it should result in a very balanced and transparent compression. And think of the Smart EQ basically as the same thing. Its job is to give you a natural balance, right? a spectral balance. Its job is to reduce harshness and muddiness and all the resonances that can make a source sound muddy or harsh. Okay, That's its main job, is to give you a natural and transparent sounding source. Now obviously the frequencies that it attenuates and it boosts is solely dependent on the algorithm. So not only is it trying to give you a clearer and more transparent source, it's also got a little target curve in there. So again if it's bass it will want to add a little bit of bass or certain frequencies and it intuitively looks at the input. It looks into the input and then splits it into all these kind of separate small little minute bands and then it adjusts accordingly. And that is Spectral balancing. <laughs> I'll say it again. Spectral balancing. Now, in this new Smart EQ3, what they've done is they've added in a group function. Now, the group function's main purpose is to stop frequency clashing. Now, the annoying thing is you can only have five instances in the group, okay? So, the best way to do it is to think of it as your mix. So, they'll have, like, different priorities. I think it's three different levels of priority. So, in a nutshell, you're telling the algorithm what frequencies you want to prioritise in terms of frequency clashing. So, if you've got like your lead vocal right is your main priority any frequencies that clash with that lead vocal will be attenuated and the level of attenuation will be dependent on the priority of that source so for example if you've got your bass under your lead vocal and there's frequency clashing in there um, but you've also got backing vocals um priority three what you will find is that the backing vocals will be more attenuated than the bass because again, you're telling the algorithm about your priority. Okay, you want the bass to stand out more than the backing vocals, but you want the lead vocal to stand out more than the bass and the backing vocals. Hopefully that makes sense, but that is the main function of it, okay? And in all of these smart Sonable plugins, um, you'll have like a learn button as well. So what you'll do is, 
you'll press the learn button, it will listen to the source, and then what it will do is it will give you a recommended setting. So for the compressor, it will give you um, recommended attack and release times, and again, you've got the spectral compression as well, you can choose to switch on, um, you can set a sidechain, do frequency duck in, there's lots of great stuff in there, okay? So in terms of how I've got this whole entire session set up, is I have let the AI do what it's going to do, okay? So in terms of the compression, I've let it set the attack and release times, and all I've done is I've set the, the threshold. Because in the end, there's no point in comparing a kick that's doing 1 dB of compression and then comparing that to a kick that's doing 6 or 7 dB of compression. The smart comp wants to compress quite a lot, and that's not me. As much as I say it's AI, there are certain tweaks that I've made because if I don't step in and I don't make certain adjustments, people are going to moan and it's not going to be a real world test, blah, 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 blah. So in the Smart EQ, you can choose how much of the curve you bring in. So in certain instances, like the overheads, I took out the lows and I took out the highs a little bit because I felt they were just too bright and it just wasn't doing enough to kind of attenuate the harshness and the symbols. I think I'd done it in the bass and there was a few other ones as well where it's just using those high pass and low pass filters. And really the high pass and low pass filters are just basically eradicating the changes to the curve that it's made. In a nutshell, that's it. And also to stop any Sonable smart users from moaning, yes, I am using the dynamic um, options as well. So there is an option in the smart EQs to use a dynamic EQ, turn it into a dynamic EQ, and I've set that to taste. So genuinely, I have used everything physically possible without going into too many tweaks to let the AI still do its thing. I have used every option that doesn't include kind of too much human tweaking, okay? I've tweaked it in real time, how I would use it. So, what you are about to hear is the mix that we've been working on with no compression and no EQ, and we've added in the compression with the EQ after it via Sonable Smart EQ and utilising all the settings in the best way that I could use it versus the mixing decisions that I have made so far. So as you know already, I've got Acoustica Brown on the drums, I've got like a Magenta on the vocals, and I think that's I think maybe there's a Pultec on the back and vocals, but it's mainly just like Acoustica, but a Pultex. In terms of the drums, I've got it on kick, snare and overheads. I've got it on the bass. I've got it on the horns. Now, I've actually not got any EQ on the horns on my mix because I just left it as is, but I have let Smart EQ do its thing. And I've kept the pianos from last week, kind of the Elton John style trick, with the LA 2A and the Pultec. Um, and what I've done is I've not EQ'd it, I've kept it the exact same. But in the Smart version, I have used the Smart EQ to kind of see what it does, if it finds the pianos too harsh, because it's all about getting a spectral balance. So in a nutshell, any place where I've used compression or EQ, I have also used Sonable Smart Comp and Smart EQ. Without further ado, let's hear my mixing decisions versus the spectral balancing of Sonable. She never applied for pictures or portraits Though her past still shines bright I never required a sailing of fortune Till a silent stop light From keeps fading away Saving perfume in hay Obviously I knew um, and the outcome of that first test. The Sonable is way smoother and there's no harshness in there whatsoever. Um, it does lack the width and it lacks like the harmonics and the character that I get from like the Acoustica plugins and like the Pultex and stuff like that and some of the compressors that I've used. But in the end, if you were to say to me, Paul, which mix would you send to the client? If that, if you were like, Paul, you can't do any more to this mix, you've got to send it now, I would send the Sonable. I can't deny it, the spectral balancing in the Sonable is better. I've EQ'd too much, you can hear it. I've just EQ'd too much, there's a little bit too much colour, a little bit too much mid-range, maybe a little bit too much harshness in the top. So, in terms of the first test, Sonable does win out, in my opinion, okay? I would use the Sonable mix. However, the Sonable 
has a massive advantage over me because obviously it's got the frequency clashing and also it's got harshness and like resonance suppression in there as well. I, I don't I don't have that in there. Obviously, I would add that in. Okay. Now, the way that I normally work is I, in terms of frequency clashing, I use um, Waves Factory Track Spacer. I actually used that on my last single. I didn't use it on my first single, but I used it on my last single, and I find that that is fantastic for selecting certain parts of the mix that you feel like maybe clashing. So I felt that the piano was clashing with the vocal. Again, I always feel that like bass and kicks clash with each other. So I set up two Track Spacer side chains so the piano isn't getting in the way of the vocal and the bass isn't getting in the way of the kick. Really simple, two instances, job done. So I've got the track spacer in, and in terms of the like resonance suppression, uh, I love to use Oak Sim Soothe. On my first single, that's what I used, and I had a demo, and normally if I'm doing like a session on my own, I normally <laughs> find some way of getting Soothe, or I get somebody else to do it, or um, I, I, I wangle another demo. But thankfully for me, I got in touch with the, the guys at Oak Sim, and they gave me Finally, I have Oak Sim Soothe all on my own. I did say I was going to do a video on it, so again, I'm going to be able to showcase it here, and I may do another uh, few videos on it in the future. So, this now means that I can control the frequency clashing of anything that I feel is getting in the way, and I can also take away any harshness via Oak Sim Soothe, which in my opinion is the best that I've ever tried. Now, many of you guys may be asking, Paul, like, why have you let it get so harsh? Why do you let it get harsh in the first place to the point where you need track space up and soothe? Right, the reason that I do it the way I do it is kind of, I kind of learned kind of the CLA method in terms of how he uses compressors. I don't do it for compressors, but what how he uses compressors is he'll over EQ, then use the compression to tame that back. Because I always find it's, it's better to go over and then bring it back rather than not knowing when too much is too much, which I kind of feel is the sonable stuff here. It's very safe and it, it, it knows not to go over certain boundaries. It's very, very safe. So I like to go a little bit overboard, okay? So again, I don't need to listen to reference and stuff. I can intuitively mix and if I go overboard, then I've got Soothe, I've got Track Spacer, and I've got um, Saturation. So I'm also using Saturation as well, via the Nailed Big Al in certain instances. Not a lot, just to kind of add a smoothing effect, just to kind of maybe smooth out some of the harshness. That's what I normally do. Those three things are key for me. Um, track Spacer for frequency clashing, Oak Sim Soothe for like resonance and like harshness and muddiness removal, uh, and also um, a bit of saturation just to smooth everything out. And the only other thing I've added is a bit more reverb, so I've got a bit of reverb on the backing vocals, a bit of reverb on the lead vocal, a bit more reverb on the pianos, Right, whatever. Let's just get into this final test, okay? And to keep it fair, um, the the extra reverbs that I've added, the, the reverb sends, I've put the same reverb sends to the Sonable, so it's got kind of the same depth, okay? So what you're going to hear in this final test, Paul Third versus like artificial intelligence, is going to be that same um, mix that you heard with track spacer, soothe, a bit of saturation, a um, bit of vocal riding, and a bit of extra reverb versus the Sonable with a bit of vocal riding, the same vocal riding, and also the same kind of amount of reverb added as well. Let's do it. Never aspired the sun of the south side till it's kept off last time. She never cries when she cries upon her. Guys on tissue prevail Streaming long and in vain Fail, baby Won't you pass them by Fail, baby No evils or gods will hide Fail, baby I've been looking there for your love But you never can So, the conclusion, <laughs> it's hard. I think Soothe is 
awesome, right? We all know how awesome Soothe is. Soothe's done a fantastic job of taking all of that harshness, all the stuff that I, I didn't like um, with my compression and EQ options, taking it out. Track spacer just kind of gave a little bit more depth to the mix and everything's kind of sitting a little bit better. I mean, the saturation just helps smooth things out slightly. And overall, I've got the same kind of character and attitude that I had in the first mix, but everything's smoother. And it's a little bit more natural. Compare that to the Sonable. The Sonable is completely natural. And in all honesty, I know for a fact a lot of people are going to prefer the Sonable. I know that are. It is what it is. You know what I mean? It's like on YouTube, you, sometimes you've got to put your balls on the guillotine, right? And if they get chopped off, they get chopped off, right? It is what it is. I, I do, I do prefer my mix. If I was to pick which one, if you say, Paul, pick which one, which one, I would go with mine. I would go, right, it's got a certain sound. Let's just go with it, right? I just go with it. I still think my mix sims half decent. I think it sims okay. Um, but I do know that certain people will prefer the Sonable because I do know a lot of people prefer smoother and kind of more natural mixes. I feel my mix has a little bit more depth, a little bit more pockets, as I always talk about, a little bit more excitement. I think that the Sonable one is really, really smooth and really well balanced. There's no harshness in it at all. However, I kind of feel the mix kind of does that a little bit and mine's kind of does that a little bit. Some people don't like that and I get that. And I'm trying to learn myself how to adapt my mix in because again, I'm in a journey myself and I'm taking you guys on that journey and hopefully you guys can learn from the mistakes that I make because you've got to make mistakes. The problem is with YouTube land is that people don't like to show their mistakes. It's all about follow me, follow me because if you follow me, you're going to become a better mixer. In terms of spectral balancing, um, I do prefer the way I do it. I just think, yeah, mine can be still a little bit harsh. I think the vocal in the Sonable, is, everything's got a little bit more warmth to it and it's, it is way warmer. People could maybe see mine just colder um, and it's maybe too hyped in the mids um, and it's maybe just a little bit too colourful. The two mixes are genuinely night and day, but I do think it's very, very handy to have a tool that can give you almost kind of guaranteed naturalness and there is no to me there's no harshness in that whatsoever so it's very very handy to have that as a comparison and i definitely think this would be a great plugin to do a mix with first let the ai do its thing just so you could like mix it first right with the sonable eq make the tweaks you're going to make leave it and then intuitively do your mix with whatever colorful plugins that you like to use get okay, analog saturation emulations or whatever you like to do or just the mixing decisions that you want to make and then reference that with the Sonable and it's kind of a way, it's a really, really good reference to make you go, right, okay, my vocal, I think, needs a little bit more warmth in it and it's maybe lacking a little bit in the lows. I think maybe it needs a little bit more warmth in there. There's certain elements of the mix I prefer. I prefer my pianos. I prefer my horns as well. I would go back and re-EQ the snare. Okay, I could have generally went back to this and re-EQ'd it and showed you, but it wouldn't. the video would be pointless because it's all about like my decisions and then comparing that to AI. It's not, oh, look, that did a little bit of a better job than me and I'm waiting to go and fix it. Um, it's, a, it's a learning curve. I personally think I've been a bit too harsh. I've maybe overhyped the mids and the snare. Um, and those are the things that, that you can take and dissect and make yourself a better mixer. The problem is if everybody was to use the Sonable stuff, then everybody's bloody mixes would sound the same, wouldn't they? So it's all about trying to get your own character, your own style, but still not adding in harshness and like not overhyping stuff and making bad mixing decisions. Because the problem that many people will have is their mix might sound harsh, but they don't know it sounds harsh until they compare it to a mix that's very, very natural, okay? Spectrally balanced. There's other ways you can do it, and, I'm, and that's what I'm thinking just now. I want to make a decision on, should I stick with what I'm doing, um, or should I just go and get Sonable? <laughs> should I just work with a smart EQ? Because in the end, if everybody prefers that in the field, that's more natural, that's going to give me that result every time. Guaranteed consistency, my workflow will be quicker, I don't need to worry about stuff as much, or do I go for this? Do I go for the analog emulations? Do I go for the, the techniques that I've been using over the years in the way that my ear wants to hear a mix, right? Do I try and be different and do I try and make my mixes better? Do I try and critique myself more, learn from my mistakes and EQ differently in the future, right? These are all the things that I'm thinking about and also the things that you might want to think about as well. So I do advise that you do the test 
um, yourself. But in the end, guys, I would love to hear your opinions in the comments, and I'm also going to do a poll as well, and I'll let you guys pick which mix you prefer. And just to let you know, guys, I am humble in defeat, right? If it turns out that you all prefer the Sonable Smart Mix, it is what it is, okay? And I'll learn from that. And yeah, you've got, you've got to be graceful in defeat, okay? Um, it's all about my learning for me, and it's all about me becoming a better mixer. And if I can learn from this experience, then I'll learn from it. So guys, thank you very much for your time. If you liked the video, like the video. If you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and I will see you again next week on Mixing Wednesdays.